Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how not to build a 3D LED cube. You might be asking why would I want to watch a how not to video and I don't really have an answer to that but I do want to show you this project that sounded like a good idea and it did not end up being a complete failure but at the same time it did not turn out as I wanted it to. So at some point I will have to go back to the drawing board to improve it. But in the meantime, let me show you what I got so far. So let's get started. For those of you that are not familiar, a very long time ago people started building these cool looking 3D LED cubes that in some cases almost looked like art sculptures. Some of them were as tiny as 3x3x3 and the 8x8x8 was considered the default size, mostly because 8 is a nice round number to a microcontroller. And there were obviously some very large LED cubes like this one and a lot of the LED cubes were single color but there were also more complex ones that used RGB LEDs. Now you have to keep in mind that a lot of these were built back in the days where you didn't have a lot of compute power on your microcontroller. For some of these all the calculations were done on the PC and the microcontroller barely managed to keep up with receiving the data over serial and updating the LED layers. Also, addressable LEDs did not exist or later they were super expensive and you needed to have really fast microcontrollers to run them. And you had to make everything yourself. The hardware, soldering all the LEDs, the engine that renders everything, making animations and a bunch of other stuff. I did make one of these a very long time ago and I managed to dig some very old images but couldn't find any videos of it in action. To me this project was a lot of fun because you had to patiently and somewhat skillfully build your own hardware and then you get to the next step which is playing with the software and creating your mini 3D engine. But at the time I built only a 4x4x4 cube because of budget and time constraints that I had to work with. Now almost two decades later every once in a while I stop and think I should build another 3D LED cube. And if I'm going to build one, I want a cube that is RGB and at least 8x8x8. And just to clarify, by far the main challenge for me building one of these today would be the time it takes to solder everything. Because it would take a very long time to hand solder 512 RGB LEDs that are floating in the air without any support. So I thought, what if I make a very very narrow LED layer on a PCB? Soldering LEDs onto a PCB should be very easy and you can also have a PCB shop do that for you. And then you can stack these layers vertically and you're good to go. At least it sounds good enough on paper, so let's give it a shot. So to begin with, I scale down my cube to 4x4x4 because it would be very easy to scale up if this works really well but I still kept the RGB requirement. For the LEDs, I selected these 5mm round WS2812 addressable RGB LEDs. They are diffuse, so they should light up nicely and also they are addressable, so driving 512 LEDs is going to be super simple because you can just daisy chain them. The first challenge was how to make a very narrow PCB layer that PCB shops would still be able and more importantly willing to manufacture for you. I actually ended up designing a 4 layer PCB that I honestly think looks ridiculous but you can leave a comment if you don't agree. The PCB outline is 100 by 100 millimeters but it basically has these 2 millimeter wide arms and everything else is void. Every PCB shop that I asked for a quote emailed me to confirm that this is not a mistake. And if you look at the PCB design, literally every layer of this 4 layer board is dedicated to one leg of the WS2812 LED. Honestly, it's just so cool and odd to see at the same time. I have also added these two mounting points for vertical columns. This is how we are going to share power, ground and data signals between layers. I intend to use just one column, but I added an option to use two more, just for mechanical support and as a fallback option. Lucky for you, we can use video editing to fast forward through the part where I'm building these. I would definitely love to have these feature in real life. But until then, let's jump to the part where I have fully assembled my new 3D LED cube that is built using PCBs. Going with the addressable LEDs was, as you can imagine, a great choice. They simplify the routing a lot and also the code that is driving them. 
Also, using PCB for horizontal and vertical layers made things much easier, and is much more forgiving than soldering LEDs mid-air. But obviously, using the PCB for this sculpture-like design has some drawbacks. Now, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, I do not think that this was a successful project. My main, if not only, issue is that I would really like to have these PCB arms less visible. Getting them to be the size of the wire would probably be very difficult, but I would love to get them to be as invisible as possible. Depending from which angle you look at the cube, they can be from almost invisible to blocking a good portion of the view. If you have suggestions on how to improve this, I would love to hear it. Maybe using glass or some other transparent material as a substrate would be an option, although probably a very expensive one. Alternatively, there might be PCB vendors who can manufacture more narrow arms. But at the same time, maybe this was not a complete failure. I did get a 3D LED cube that looks somewhat nice, it's just I know it's possible to make it even better. So maybe that's the goal for one of the future videos. But that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you made it this far, thank you, you're awesome. Thank you all for watching. My name is Sasha, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.